In this presentation, we will discuss special program number 5, Right Pyramid of Stars. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The first topic of this presentation is Special program, print the right pyramid of stars. And the second topic is Homework problem. In this presentation, first we will understand how to write the program to print the right pyramid of stars on the screen. And then we will move on to the homework problem of this lecture. Let's first understand how to write the program to print the right pyramid of stars. But before that, we first need to observe the problem statement carefully. And then we will understand how to solve that problem. So let's move ahead and let's see the problem statement. Write a program to print the right pyramid of stars as shown. We need to print this pyramid on the screen. This is right start pyramid of stars. And we are interested in printing this pattern on the screen. If we observe carefully, then this part of this pattern is quite familiar to us. We already learned how to print this type of pattern on the screen. We learned how to print right triangle pattern. This is the right triangle pattern. The only difference here is that instead of numbers, now we have stars. In the first row, we have one star. In the second row, we have two stars. In the third row, we have three stars and so on. So, if the number of rows entered by the user is five, then we know how to print this pattern on the screen. And the remaining pattern will also be printed later on. But first, we will write the program to print this pattern correctly. So, let's move ahead and write the program for the same. First, we need to ask the user to enter the number of rows as usual. So, let's ask the user to enter the number of rows using the input method. And then we will pass the input method to the int method so that the string returned by the input method must be converted to integer, which we can eventually provide to some variable. So, let's do this now. This line of code will take care of everything. Here, to the input method, we are passing enter the number of rows, this string. This will be printed exactly on the screen and user will enter its input. We will receive that input here and eventually that will be converted to integer. And finally, rows variable will point to that integer. Now, what is the next step after this? We now know the number of rows. If we have the information about the number of rows, we can easily print this pattern. This is what we have learned in our previous presentations. Now, let's understand how to print this pattern correctly on the screen. For this purpose, we need nested for loop structure. The outer for loop will represent the rows and the inner for loop will represent the columns. Let's first write the outer for loop statement. This is how the outer for loop statement looks like. For i in range 1 comma rows plus 1. Here, the second argument is rows plus 1, which makes sense. If rows is equal to 5, then here we'll get 6. So eventually we will get the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And that's what we want. So, initially we know that i will receive 1. This means that initially we are at row number 1. And we just want to print one star here. This means that the number of stars depends upon the row number that we are currently at. If we are at row number 1, then we just need to print one star. Now, let's proceed and write the inner for loop statement, which will represent the columns of this specific pattern. Here we know that this pattern requires five columns as we can observe here as well. Therefore, the inner for loop must look like this for j in range 1 comma i plus 1. Here, the second argument is i plus 1 because we know that the stopping column depends upon the row number. So, if we are at row number 1, then we must stop at column number 1. If we are at row number 2, then we must stop at column number 2. If we are at row number 4, then we must stop at column number 4. We must not proceed and print stars after this. This must be the stopping column. Therefore, i plus 1 is provided as the second argument here. So, we know that if we are at row number 1, this will become 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So, eventually from this range function, we will get 1. And this means that this loop will run only one time. And within this for loop, we just need this print statement to print the stars correctly on the screen. 
Here we first need to print the star and then we need to print the white space character. After this for loop, we need this print statement to print the new line as usual. So this is the program which helps us in printing this pattern correctly on the screen. Now let's execute this program line by line and let's observe how we are getting this pattern on the screen. So let's start with the first line. We first need to ask the user to enter the number of rows. So let's ask the user to enter the number of rows. Let's say the user has entered 5. So we will receive 5 here in rows variable. This means that rows variable must point to this object with value 5. Now after this, the next step is to execute this line. Here, variable i will initially receive value 1. Therefore, i must point to this object with value 1. Now what is the next step? We need to execute this line. For j in range 1 comma i plus 1. We know that i is 1, therefore this must be replaced by 2. We will get 1 from this range function. This means that this loop will run just one time. This means that variable j must point to the object with value 1. Now after this, we need to execute this statement. This means that we must print our first star along with the white space character. So in the new line, we will get one star and the white space character. Now after executing this for loop, we will go to this line and we will print the new line here. Now we are at new line. After this, we need to execute this statement. This time, this value will be replaced by 2. Now we need to execute this statement. This time, range function will return two values, 1 and 2. This means that this for loop will run two times. First, j will receive 1. After this, we need to execute this print statement. This means that star along with the white space will be printed on the screen. Then we need to execute the statement once again because we know that this for loop will run twice. This time, j will receive 2. Therefore, we need to replace this 1 by 2. After this, we need to execute this statement. Star along with the white space will be printed on the screen. This is what we are getting as the result. Now we know that we are done with this for loop. So now we need to execute this statement. This means that we will now move to the new line. We know that the remaining part will also be printed by this code without any problem. So I am not going to execute each line after this. I am just going to print the output on the screen. This is the pattern so obtained and we are done with this pattern. This means that now we need to move ahead and print this pattern. So let's go ahead. And this time now, we need to print this pattern on the screen. How to print this pattern is the main question. If we observe this pattern carefully, the first row contains 4 stars this time. Second row contains 3 stars. The third row contains 2 stars. And the fourth row, that is the last row, is containing 1 star. We know that the outer for loop decides the number of stars that will eventually get printed on the screen. We learned this from this pattern. The outer for loop decides the number of stars that will be printed in each row. Because the outer for loop gives us the row number and row number decides the number of stars that will be printed on the screen. So if we are at row number 3, then we know that 3 stars will be printed on the screen. But this time, we need to do complete opposite thing. If we are at row number 1, then we need to print 4 stars this time. Previously, if we were in row number 1, then we need to print just 1 star. But this time we need to print 4 stars. This means that we need to change the situation completely. The outer for loop will change in this case. Now let's write the outer for loop statement first and let's see how to print this pattern on the screen. The outer for statement looks like this for k in range rows minus 1, 0 and minus 1. Here we are passing three arguments to this range function. This time we need to start from rows minus 1 which is equal to 4 because we know that rows is equal to 5. So we need to start from 4 and we need to go up to 1 and here we are decrementing by 1 every time. So first we will get 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. We need to stop at 1 because the second argument here is 0. We already know how this works. So from this range function, we will get 4, 3, 
2 and 1. Eventually, variable k will hold these values one at a time. As this time, in the first row, we need to print 4 stars. We need 4 from here. So, eventually, the inner for loop will run 4 times. And that's what we want. If k is equal to 3, then we know that inner for loop will run 3 times. Now, let's write the inner for statement. For l in range 1, comma k plus 1. The name of these variables does not matter. It is up to you what name you choose for these variables. I have chosen k and l. For l in range 1, comma k plus 1. We know that in the first iteration, k will be equal to 4. This means that this for loop will run 4 times because here we are passing k plus 1 as the second argument. 4 plus 1 gives us 5 and this means that this range function will return 1, 2, 3 and 4. This means that this for loop will run 4 times. And within this for loop, we will use the same print statement as what we are using here. So, let's write this print statement. Print star comma and equal to single quotes and within these single quotes one white space character. After executing this for loop, we need this print statement. So, let's put this print statement here. And this is the complete code. Here, this code is responsible for printing this bottom pattern. So, now let's move ahead and execute this code line by line. The first line is for k in range rows minus 1, 0, minus 1. We know that this range function will return 4 first. So, this variable k will receive value 4. So, this means that variable k must point to this object with value 4. After this, we need to execute this statement for l in range 1, comma k plus 1. This means that variable l must point to this object with value 1. Now, we need to execute this statement. This means that the first star along with the white space will be printed on the screen. Now, let's execute this statement once again. This time, this value will be replaced by 2. Now, let's execute this statement. One star along with the white space will be printed after this star. Now, let's execute this statement. This time, this value will be replaced by 3. Let's execute this statement. We will get star on the screen and the white space character. Let's execute this statement once again. We will get 4 here. And then, we need to execute this statement. We will get one more star here. Now, we know that we are done with this for loop. So, now we need to execute this statement, which means that we need to move to the new line. I'm not going to execute each line right now because we know that we will get all the remaining stars according to this code. So, now I'm going to print all the remaining stars and your job is to observe the output with the number of rows that are entered by the user, which is equal to 5, we will get this kind of pattern. I hope this is completely clear. So, with this, we are done with this program. Now, we need to execute this code in Visual Studio Code to verify our result. So, let's open the Visual Studio Code and let's run this code there itself. I've opened this folder Python work in my Visual Studio Code and I've opened this file writepyramidpattern.py which is situated in this folder. This is the code of the write pyramid pattern and now we need to execute this code. So, let's open the new terminal and let's type python, then whitespace, then name of this file, followed by .py extension. So, let's type it here. Now, let's hit enter. We have been asked to enter the number of rows. Let's enter 5. After hitting enter, we will get this pattern on the screen. This is the correct pattern. Now, let's execute this code once again. This time, let's enter 10. Here, we are getting this pattern. This is the complete pattern we are getting on the screen. So, with this, we have verified our code. This means that our code is working correctly. Now, let's get back to our presentation. So, we have understood how to write the program to print the right pyramid of stars. And we have seen the code in Visual Studio Code and verified it as well. Now, let's move to the homework problem of this presentation. Write a program to print the left pyramid of stars as shown. Your job is to print this pyramid on the screen. So, 
I would encourage you to write the program on your own and post your program in the comment section below for us to check. So this is the homework problem of this lecture and now we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.